Hello, good morning, I hope you are fine. Child of God, today St. Paul says that there are some people who are behaving as if they were enemies of the cross of Christ. He says that their God is their stomach. What does he mean by this? This is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians chapter 3 from verses 17 to the end of that chapter and then beginning from chapter 4 verses 1. What St. Paul is talking about this morning is the fact that among the Philippian church, there were some people who were beginning to think that all that mattered was material things, worldly things. Of course, like you know, the Philippian church was made up of some rich people. Of course, I've told you the story of how some of them raised some funds and tried to support the work that St. Paul was doing. So St. Paul reminds them this morning that, look, it is good to be rich, it is good to have money, but materialism is against the cross of Christ. And that can lead to your damnation. If you think that all that matters is your stomach, then you are in real trouble. You must understand that there is a transcendental dimension to human life. There is a spiritual dimension. And you should also try to take care of your spirits, even as you take care of your bodies. So that's the first thing i like to show to you this morning from the readings. So the, one of the things that St. Paul says that makes us enemies of the cross of Christ is materialism. The second thing that St. Paul points to is legalism. Legalism. Among the Philippians also, there were some Judaizers who began to tell the people that unless you were circumcised, unless you obeyed the Jewish laws, you cannot be a Christian. So St. Paul says they have made, they, they pride themselves in those things of which they should be ashamed. They pride themselves of those things of which they should be ashamed. What are those things of which they should be ashamed? Their insistence on the practice of the law as against the need to have faith in Christ Jesus. So St. Paul is saying very simply that when you put all your attention in just obeying human laws and human traditions and you forget the spiritual need of your brothers and sisters of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, then you are taking a huge risk of losing your soul. So St. Paul says, imitate us. Look at the example that we gave to you while we were with you. Remember that Paul was no longer with them. He was in prison at this time. And when he was with them, he taught them very clearly two things. That the body is important, the stomach is important, but the soul is also equally important. That laws are important, but the reason for the law is even more important. So those two things are the things that St. Paul was trying to remind them this morning to take note of, otherwise they would risk going the wrong way. Now, in the Gospel reading of this morning, Jesus tells us about the need for networking, the need to network. What's the connection between this and what we just said before? The connection is that just because some Christians think that the Word of God encourages us to have a spiritual life, they then think that because of that, there is no need to work on material things. There's no need to understand how the world works. Some people think that because you're a Christian, you shouldn't work to become rich. Because you're a Christian, you should isolate yourself from the world and not be in the world. Remember, the Word of God says that we are not of the world, but we are in the world. So never forget that we're in the world and it's important to know how the world works. Check out how the mortgages are doing. Check out how to invest. Check out how to save money. Check out how Forex trades. Check out how businesses are done. Check out how insurances work. Try to participate in the world in which you live. Go and vote. Monetary elections. Participate in manifestations, in demonstrations. It's important to be Christians, but also to be citizens. So let's look at what Jesus says in the Gospel reading of this morning. He says that there was a man, this gospel reading is taken from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 16, from verses 1 to 8. He says that there was a man who was a manager in his uh, master's company. And then reports came to the master that he was no longer doing his job very well. So the master decided to sack him and told him that he was going to sack him. And in those days, when you were in charge of your master's debtors, the, your salary came from the amount of margin you were able to put between the amount they borrowed and the profit uh, and the interest that was going to come on top of that money. So he was a particularly bad steward. Not only was he ma mismanaging his master's uh, businesses, but he was actually, was actually charging a lot of interest on those debts. So when he realized that he was going to be sacked, he called all of the master's debtors and began to write off his part of the debt. In other words, the one who was owing 100, he told him to write down 50 because the other 50 was supposed to be his own salary from the interest. The one who was owing 80, the one who was owing 100, he asked him to write down 80. The one who was owing 80, he asked him to write down 50 and so on and so forth. He practically removed 
everything that was supposed to come to him when those people paid back their debt. Why? The Bible says that he thought to himself, he was not strong enough to dig and he was, not, he was too ashamed to beg. So the only thing that was left was to begin to build good relationships, networking. So he told himself, at least when I'm sacked, there will be people to welcome me to their homes. Child of God, Jesus Christ commended his servant and says that sometimes the children of the dark are smarter than the children of the light. Do you know that your network is exactly the same thing as your net worth? May the mind God bless you today, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.